time everyone was like, I'm not, um, we started. <laughs> yeah, we started. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We've, um, we're back, finally. <laughs> um, and today, I'm going to start off by talking about prompting. A lot of the times, um, we see that people don't do any prompting, and that's when children, they, they kind of can't initiate a movement themselves, and then nothing happens. Um, so they'll start to maybe do a more instinctive movement for them. So if we, I give them one the pencil and don't, give some sort of prompt, they'll go, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. And there seems to be this big worry by mm. people that I'm aware of anyway, that yeah. they say, oh, I don't want my child to become prompt, dependent. dependent, you know. Don't worry about that initially. Initially, we want the child to be successful. We don't want them to feel like a failure by not being mm-hmm. able to do it. So verbal prompting, air prompting you know we'll give some examples now so let's talk about when you're kind of in the first stages of RPM and you're doing torn choices these are the types of prompts um I would expect to give especially when you're starting out so if I said oh today Sue we're going to talk about history h-i-s-t-o-r-y history so what we're going to talk about get the paper h-i-s-t-o-r-y history or a-r-t art I'm passing the pencil over. It's very rare that somebody would immediately just <laughs> tap history without any prompting. So usually what would happen is I have to go, go on, move your arm, move your elbow, touch it, go on, go on, get it, that's it, you're getting there, go on. <laughs> so you see, like, I'm not just going, reach for it, I'm, I'm literally giving a stream of verbal prompting, move your elbow, reach it, tap it, that's it, touch it, touch it, touch it. There we go, history. And then I'll stick it down. Sometimes the child, like I did then, might just sort of drop the pencil on it. You know, in the initial stages, just keep in your head, you are teaching the skill, mm-hmm. the skill of how to choose. So we need to teach the child the skill of holding the pencil and of moving it to touch their choice of answer. Mm. I wouldn't look at it in a testing way at all no. at the start. You just have to look at it as this is a new skill we're learning and just try and see it very mechanically. So if I like, look at your child's arm... Like, is the elbow not doing anything? Maybe you need to say, move your elbow. Is the hand just... So you might need to, like, go on that way, that way, that way. Just look at the arm and see what's happening. Look at it very mechanically at the start, and and then you'll feel a bit better, like, helping your child get on with it. So then the second time, oh, and in history, we're going to look at the history of um, Antarctica. A-N-T-A-R-T-I-C-A, Antarctica. So where are we going to look at the history of? A place called A-S-I-A, Asia or A-N-T-A-R-T-I-C-A, Antarctica. Which one? Lift your hand. That's it, go for it. That's it, move your elbow, keep it going. Come on, you can do it. Move your hand, move your hand. Go on. that's it, Antarctica. And usually what you'd find is, as the muscle memory grows to each um, choice, you're not having to give the prompts then because the person knows how it feels to touch over here, they know how it feels to touch over here. So then you're not having to give that level of prompting anymore, but it's vital though to get things going that you do do it at the start. Okay, so so what would happen if you know you go through this stage mm-hmm. and, and, and we've got, let's put those two choices back down, so say this yeah. repeating it again, and, and, and here I am, Yeah. and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm stuck, I'm really not, it's really not happening, Nothing's and happening, I'm yeah. really not going for it. So then what will you do, Alex? So then you'd add in like the next layer, which is motor modelling. So here you're actually showing the person the motions of each choice. So, oh, here is, like, this is where Asia is, this is where Antarctica is. Make a choice, which one, which one? That's it, touch it, touch it, touch it. And if at the start, like let's say I've had some people that, you know, even after you show them Asia here, Antarctica here, which one? And then sometimes the hand might like drift over this way. But then the hand just gets lost again because they're just not used to doing that movement. So then you might say, go on, push it down, push it down, that's it, touch it, touch it, touch it. So I'm just pointing to it just to literally help the person create that motor pattern, not because I'm trying to, like, you know, help them cheat. <laughs> I don't really care about that start. At the start, I'm just concerned with helping them grow that muscle memory to this side and to this side. So what, so, so what I'm feeling here as the, the student, as the child, is I'm learning which muscles I need to actually engage, Mm -hmm. how it feels to engage those muscles to move my hand there or to move my hand here. So the motor modelling, the hand over hand bit, is just to show that muscle movement. After any modelling, 
you always then ask the child to do it independently. Mm-hmm. That's really important. RPM is not hand over hand. <laughs> That's yeah. what we wanted to nail from that. <laughs> okay, so then let's say you know you've done the choices and you get to a good level where maybe you're just having to put the pencil in the hand and go on, make a joke, and that's it. And then you know you decide, oh, we're going to start spelling some things now. What we'll do is I'll show you like what to do and also what not to do because it seems like no matter how much you do show people what to do, you know sometimes people um, do what not to do as well. <laughs> so let's say we're going to spell um, history. Do a nice word in Antarctica. So I'm holding the board. I'm putting in a central location to Sue's arm. It's midpoint. And then let's say if Sue, you know, she needs to get the H. This is what I'm not going to do. Yeah. <laughs> I see this a lot, you know, it's That's just from the side. side yeah. Yeah, it's just <laughs> <laughs> okay, so history. This way, this way. Okay. <laughs> and so sometimes No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it might even be like this. Yeah, I <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> what you want to do is you really want to use Lots of verbal prompting, lots of air prompting at the start to help the person in the same way as they grew the muscle memory to the two choices. Now we're doing it to the nine choices on this board or, you know, 26 choices on this board. So let's say if we were touching the H, this is what I'd do. So hold the pencil and move your arm all the way down. That's it, just in front. Move your elbow, that's it, keep it coming. That's it, keep it coming. Go, 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 go. Push it, push it. Very nice, H. (laughs) So sometimes, like, you'll be amazed, like, just through spelling the word, like, history, Probably if you wrote out a transcript, you'd have like a paragraph of just, that's it, keep it coming, that's it, nearly there, push, push, push. You can't give too much at the start. And you honestly find like the more you practice the different motions, the less you have to give because the muscle memory is there in place. Right, yeah. Um, So just to kind of um, go over in a bit more detail the verbal prompts that you might give. Um, it might be uh, move your elbow. Move your elbow. You hear, hear Soma doing that an awful lot. <laughs> Lift your elbow. Move your elbow. Move your elbow. But the elbow yeah. just droop a lot. Yeah. And if the elbow's going down, it's very yeah. hard to get a high yeah. one. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's just touch it, touch it, or find it, find it. And you, you want to kind of tailor it to your student as well. So yeah. if, for example, I had a student where the, el- the elbow wasn't an issue, <laughs> it was more um, the accuracy when, once they got it close. I wouldn't be saying move your elbow because that would be completely unrelated. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd be going, oh, go on, over to the left, over to the left. That's it, now touch it. <laughs> or yeah. over this way, over this way. That's it. Just up, lift your elbow up, or down, down, down. <laughs> and, and sometimes what happens is when you are giving these prompts, so Alex, I've noticed with kids that you say, lift your elbow up, 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 and their arm goes, <gasps> yeah, and, and, and sort of, it, it becomes a bit sort of over-exaggerated. Mm. So, um, there are, and some kids we've seen are able to do it better with their elbow mm. planted on the um, table. So, you know, it's, it's, experiment. it's a case of experimenting mm. to find out what really works, but not taking the hand and just doing yeah, it for them. Definitely. And also, in, in that same respect, you know, over time you really want to work on keeping the board, you know, in a very central location where you're not moving it, because otherwise, how is someone supposed to grow that muscle memory to the A, to the I, if you're always <laughs> uh, manoeuvring it to help? Um, Now, an air prompt is when you're kind of giving more of a gesture to the right area. So, say if we were touching the ASU, I'd be going, over this way, that's it, touch it, move it forward, that way. (laughs) So, you're kind of giving a gesture and, you know, over time, sometimes you might start off like really pointing to the letter just to help the person grow the muscle memory and once they've aimed in the first few times and it's, oh, okay, I can do it now because I've done it before. But over time, though, you just grow it to more of a gesture, like, over there. And then in the end, you might even do it with your head, like, that way, <laughs> over here, down yeah, there. Yeah. So you reduce it as you go along. But at the start, though, you know, you can't give enough <laughs> to yeah. grow that muscle memory. Yeah, just just beware of, of doing I, I mean, I have seen um, some people and, the, and they kind of, you know, up a bit, up a bit, oh. le- right a bit, right a bit, left a bit, you know. And it's just... I mean, in that way, it's just a bit over the top. That's why it's important to tailor what you're doing. So if if you're doing lots of like, lift your arm, lift your arm, and that's not helping, don't do it. (laughs) You only do what helps. So, and this is why it's important as well to record yourself back so you can actually watch, okay, when I said that prompt, did that help? Yeah. That prompt wasn't useful. Actually, maybe if I just, maybe an air prompt is a little bit more useful than a verbal prompt in this instance. So I'm just going to maybe just do a, uh, over, this way that way sometimes it's more useful with a verbal prompt say if you're saying go up 
rather than going up, 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 it's actually more effective to go up and kind of keep it like elongate it so the person's got that motion up this way and D <laughs> rather than this way, this way, this way. <laughs> so you have to experiment with what works. Now, on the other side of that, so we've kind of talked about somebody that would maybe be very slow pointing and really growing the skills. On the other side of that, you might have somebody that's very stabby, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like, whoa. <laughs> so there you'll have to kind of be giving prompts in a, in a quite, you know, in a slightly different way. So say if we were spelling like big Sue, and so you say you're, you're very stabby, you know, and oh, it just goes everywhere. So here you have to really help the person slow down a bit more. So he'll be saying, right, we're going for the B, this way, this way, this way, this way. And I'd, you'd have to like maybe point before they even got there. And over and in between each one, I'd be going, right, slow, slow, so that's slow, whoa, that's it. But you, yeah. <laughs> you have to find a way to slow them down a bit more. So there your prompting wouldn't be, it would be, here and you'd have to really be like pointing at the start to help them get the aim um, more accurate. Yeah, so, and really important to just do one letter at a time oh, initially. Yeah. Take the pencil away, write it down. So you're stopping if, that. Even yeah. if the letters are on the same board, like yeah. big, you yeah. want to take the board because you you need time as well to kind of. Oh my gosh, that was fast. B and it, as I was writing it down, I'd be slowing the process down to so oh B B for big. Now we're going to get I. So don't be like, oh, be, uh, don't, you know, you want to bring the person down a bit more. So try and like, be for big. Now we're going to get the I really slowly. This way. <laughs> and like, you have to kind of get in there before they can, otherwise it can go all over the place. Um, yeah. and, and, and for this sort of stabby person, I mean, just pick up that stencil again, because sometimes what can happen as well is this. Oh, where they want to grab hold of the board as well you don't want that no, to happen at no. all and it might even be sometimes that you have to sort yeah of like keep that one down yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's say try yeah. and grab the board now you might even have to do it that way <laughs> <laughs> you'll work it out <laughs> um, okay shall we cut this yeah. one off for now and then we'll do another one just so it's sure. not too long yes <laughs> <laughs> i hope that was useful <laughs>